G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. Today we're going to talk about pore point depressants. So a couple of weeks ago we had a video on what the pore point is. And that's effectively the point at which you can no longer pour the lubricant out of the bottle. And that's got to do with the sort of the crystallization of the paraffins within the bulk lubricant. So we can prevent the onset of that event through the use of a special additive called pore point depressants. Let's get into it. All right, so let's talk about pore point depressants. Now, if you'll remember, the pore point is the lowest temperature at which a lubricant is designed to flow. So not necessarily at which it, it stops being poured out of the bottle, that's usually a couple of degrees less, but it's roughly the same, same point. So, you know, we can understand pouring lubricant out of a bottle gets more and more difficult as it gets colder and it gets thicker. Now, we said in the previous video that unlike water, which crystallizes basically at a uniform temperature, we've got to remember that lubricants are made out of a whole bunch of different kinds of molecules, some of which are paraffins. So the straight chain paraffins are the things which crystallize first. And that's got to do basically with the surface area of the molecule, right? So they're, they're very regular mo molecules, which allow them to form crystalline structures, but they're also very long. That gives them a lot of surface area, and therefore there's a lot of van der Waal interaction between them. Now, if you'll remember, these cells kind of start to band together and they form these needle-like structures. And of course, those needle-like structures form uh, a kind of like a gel matrix, right? And as they start to do that, they can trap other lubricant inside. And that's when you really start to reach the limits of your pore point. Now, the way that we can prevent this is by disrupting the crystallization process. So there are these uh, molecules called polymethacrylates. You might recognize that name because polymethacrylates are also a VI improver, and we'll get into the differences between them. But effectively what they are is you take a straight um, alkane and you kind of take an ester functional group and you put the ester functional group along what we would call the backbone of the molecule. And the, R, the rest of the R functional group on the ester becomes itself a straight chain alkane. And so this is what the molecule roughly looks like. And what we're trying to achieve here is you're having these straight chain alkanes that look like paraffins. And so they're going to sort of attach themselves to those um, crystals that have started to form and disrupt them from coming into contact with each other and forming larger needle-like crystals. So it really disrupts gel formation. So that's effectively what we're, we're trying to achieve here. Now, of course, these molecules can be quite large and that enables them to disrupt uh, a lot of that wax formation process. Now, what it really looks like in, in practice is this long backbone with a whole bunch of alkanes that come off the side. Right? Now that molecule looks very similar to one that we've seen before, which is a VI improver. So what's the difference between a VI improver and a pore point depressant? Because they both come from the same family. So polymethacrylates can be both pore point depressants and VI improvers. And effectively, it's the geometry which is different about them. So with uh, pore point depressants, what we want is a roughly a short backbone with very long kind of arms that stick out. So those arms are what is disrupting the, the crystals from interacting with each other. With a VI improver, what we want is something with a very, very long backbone and short arms, which curls up on itself and then at high temperatures starts to unfurl, right? So in unfurling, it sort of increases its surface area and therefore makes a larger contr uh, contribution to the viscosity as the temperature increases. So that's the primary difference between pore point depressants and VI improvers, even though they come generally from the same family. All right, so that's been a really quick one today. Um, I hope that's been illustrative of what a pore point depressant is and how it works. As usual, if you've got questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, it's been Lubrication Explained.